Kamala Harris won't end the economic crisis. She will only make it worse. And why hasn't she done it? She talks about it. She's doing a plan. You know, she's going to announce it this week, maybe. She's, she's, she's waiting for me to announce it so she can copy it. Like, remember, a couple of days ago, and But she's been a ghost. Pretty much like she has been her entire term as vice president. Now, Joe Biden stepped down, stepped aside as the presumptive Democratic nominee on July 21st. Joe Biden was forced to step down and step aside as a presumptive Democratic nominee after a coup, which we all know was orchestrated and executed by. Okay, now I'm going to look at this right now. I'm looking at my calendar because I just want to make sure, you know, July 21st was a Sunday. We've had one week, two weeks, three weeks and one day since Joe Biden stepped aside. The only damn place we've seen Kamala Harris is at, is at pep rallies. Pep rallies and free Megan the Stallion concerts, booty shaking twerk fests, booty shaking contests, and uh, on uh, gay commercials with drag queens. What's up? Somebody got to say something. And it can't just be the conservatives. Right is right. I'm talking to my sister here. Come on now. You running for the presidency of the United States of America. You got my vote. Why would she have your vote? Stephen A. Smith, I swear to God, this guy, he, I, I truly, I honestly dislike listening and watching in general. And this is just another clear indication of why. Because he, all he does is this, but he never really says anything. Why on God's green earth would she have your vote? Please explain. As you were sitting here talking about how she has been a ghost for the last three plus weeks, why would she have your vote? What has she done to earn it besides you just being a fucking token house? You're just going to vote for her because she's black? You running for the presidency of the United States of America. What you hiding for? Yeah, good question. What are you hiding for? Or is this just another talking point of Stephen A. Smith because he's employed by the woke mob and he'll do anything for a paycheck. He's worse than Steve Harvey. And I mean hiding in plain sight. Somebody got to say it. Somebody got to say it. Now, you can't be running for the presidency of the United States. Not one single press conference. Not one single one-on-one -on -one sit-down interview where somebody gets to question you about the questions that we ask. That's not fair. Life's not fair. And she's more than welcome. She can run for president by doing this or by not doing this. But we all know that she's not going to win. I mean, there's no chance that she could legitimately beat Donald J. Trump. And if by chance she does or did, then we all know the truth, right? That's not fair. And if you're a conservative and you out there lambasting enough for it, ridiculing her for it, trying to torment her for it or whatever, it is perfectly within your right to do so. All of you anti-conservatives out there, shut the hell up. That's a valid point. Yeah, Stephen A. Smith, take your own advice. Shut the hell up. It ain't valid to bring up a blackness or an Indian heritage and to try to point to things of that nature. That's nonsense. But to ask her about her record, because she does, she is attached to the Biden record, it's definitely apropos, especially when you were bragging about the record. You can brag about it, but what's the record? The record amount of illegal immigrants you allowed to cross the border into this country? The record amount of inflation that has driven the cost of living up so high that people can't even fucking see straight? Like, what record are you talking about? The record amount of lies that you told to cover up Biden's incompetency and declining cognitive decline only to then turn around and say yeah you know kind of you were right yeah we we were we were covering it up all along we talked we talked 
uh, about Biden, Biden being a, a, a transformative president. Well, stand on it then. Stand on it. Which, where you at? And don't believe the hype. Stephen A. Smith, he's no better than CNN and all the other left wing media outlets that consistently continue to pump lies, just pumping lies 24 seven. Trump has kind of been thrown on his heels by this and he's not really sure how to go after Vice President Harris. He knew his attack lines on, on President Biden. He really has struggled with how to, how to go after someone who's 20 years younger than him, who is a different gender, a different race. It, it's kind of been this moment where he has not been able to coalesce around a single attack line. I know you guys are objective over there that you just report the news as it is. <laughs> oh, I know. CNN makes a... I know was that supposed to be a laugh line? I wasn't supposed to be, but uh, I guess it is. Trump has kind of been... Bro. Wow. wow. Bro. Wow. Bro. <laughs> How crazy is that? That's the wild. audience is like, shut the fuck up. Wow. That is hilarious. They thought he was being a joker. They thought that was a joke. Yeah. That's how crazy this world has gotten. Oh We're God. fucking CNN <laughs> being unbiased is a joke to people in the audience. That's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. And why? What what got accomplished? If you had you were running a business, what did you accomplish by doing things that way? You've ruined your business. Mm. Because now people think you're full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Hit the like button if you think CNN is full of shit. Uh, I want to play one exchange that was kind of classic. Well, there were a lot of exchanges that were exchanges that were classic Donald Trump, but this one really stuck out to us. And I suck you were, were bombed, but now they're they're like full cities again. So right, it's right, really right. not that's something right. that you know. That's um, right. So it's, it's not it's not as scary as people think, basically. So that was more Elon Musk than uh, Donald Trump talking about sort of suggesting that what happened almost 80 years ago, I think 80 years ago next year, uh, the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, now it's okay. Um, kind of trying to blow off the, the impact of that. Absolutely incorrect. Couldn't be furthest from the truth. And you guys know, if you watched the conversation with Donald Trump and Elon Musk, which maybe you did with us because we were on it for over three hours working through the technical difficulties and the glitch and then for the entire conversation. And you know good and well that, yeah, those words were spoken, but there was far more context to that conversation than what CNN is trying to portray here. But sometimes they do draw the line. And it's because they can't just flat out lie 100% of the time. So what they do is they try to twist Trump and Elon's words in such a way because they haven't gotten any solid talking points or accomplishments from Kamala to boast. But wait, there's more. Lefties are losing it and they are truly delusional. Can't trust the people who started the border fire to put out the border fire. The border, and it was the he didn't start, please let me finish there. The border fire, though. Uh, absolutely. Like there was no border there was nine, there was was 94 president. executive orders that were rescinded by the Biden administration regarding the border. Do you think that had an impact, Tara? In this video, a CNN guest becomes deranged after getting a reality check on immigration. In this upcoming election, there are issues that are most important to voters. Let me tell you what they are. Top five. Number one, inflation. Number two, immigration. Number three, the economy. Number four, abortion. And number five, health care. So obviously you have these propaganda puppets that go onto the news and they get into a debate, a heated argument uh, in regards to the failed policies of the Biden and Harris administration. We have someone who cannot handle the truth. She absolutely has a meltdown and understand something. She is so biased. She can't even acknowledge the facts around immigration and how bad it's gotten. So without further ado, let's play that video. Think about Kamala Harris's, one of her first campaign ads, right? One of the first things she says is that she's tougher on the border than Donald Trump. 10 to 15 million illegal immigrants came into this country in the last four years under Kamala Harris that's and Joe Biden's watch. That's not a number that's been verified. That has been a number that has been that's verified. Been ver that's how not a number that's been talked about. That's been a number that's been tried and been sold, but I have not seen any government so organization no that says 10 to 15 uh, million. Number would you has say has anyone seen this number do, documented? Do you actually what believe you that Kamala Harris is tougher on the border and border security than Donald Trump? I think well, she's well, different on polling, According to polling, the American people believe that Kamala Harris is not as bad on immigration 
immigration as you guys are trying to make her seem. Now, we already know that that immigration and the border security and all that has been a pain point for Democrats for years. I worked on border security for seven years when I was a Republican staffer on Capitol Hill. This has been an ongoing problem for three decades since Ronald Reagan. Neither side has actually been quite serious about fixing this until recently when President Biden um, had a bipartisan bill that he said he would sign, which is, I, I'm telling you, if Republicans had a bill that looked like that back when I was in Congress, they would have been thrilled. It was a bipartisan bill that Republican senators worked on, and Donald Trump said, do not pass this, do not support it, because it will hurt my election. I need it as a cudgel in the election. But there was, and this is exactly what we're using as a But I have another point that I want to finish, because did you brought up phony? No, it's true. It's 100% true. Why else did it pass? He said he did that. I mean, can you tell me what polls show that people trust Kamala Harris more than President Trump when it comes to immigration. In fact, we can find polls that say the opposite. And this is what they do. They take what is factual, they flip it around, and try to use it as a tool to push to the narrative and the support for Kamala Harris. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? And this just in breaking, in one of the first campaign policy pledges the harris campaign has just officially came out against against deporting illegal aliens under any circumstances your thoughts on this yeah you can't <laughs> you just can't make this stuff up anymore folks and don't just take my word for it today we're trying to find out from the attendees what kamala harris's greatest accomplishment has been a vp um, I mean, honestly, I'm not too into politics. I'm just here for the vibe. Uh, becoming the first uh, female vice president. So becoming, just becoming the VP is the best accomplishment? Yeah, absolutely. Being a good person. Being a good person? <laughs> yeah, um, she's, I mean, she's, 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 I don't know. <laughs> she seems really good for women. Harris is there with the energy. She has a lot of enthusiasm, so. It's important to get behind her. What is Kamala's like top accomplishment you think? Um, I can't say anything right now. Um, give me a second. <laughs> uh, her top, her top um, like contributions to policy or policy as VP. I wasn't in on the policy making decisions with, with President Biden, so I don't know. My favorite policies. Oh my gosh. See, I wish they would tell us more about that because I honestly don't know. Um, oh, I know she's done some good work with immigration, even though they say opposite. What do they say? Well, the, well what is it? She's the she's the border czar. She's the, yeah. fault, the fake and it's, border czar. And it's her fault that all these immigrants are coming over, you know, to cross the border right now, which I don't think they are. <laughs> People have been saying that Kamala is the border czar, or whatever that means. Uh, is there an issue at the border? Has Kamala done anything about it, or was there not anything to do about it? And so they're just kind of making things up. So I don't think there's an issue with the border at all. Uh, yeah, I feel like, yes, illegal immigrant, immigrants are coming to America, but that's what America is all about, is to come to America and live that American dream, because America isn't just for the whites. It's not just for the blacks. It's not just for the Mexicans. No, it's for everyone around the world. We're supposed to be a country of letting people come in and do what they'd like. I mean, I understand that with uh, they say the border crisis is causing all these drug issues and it's causing crime, but in my opinion, there's crime everywhere. You can go to New York, you can go to Canada, you can go anywhere across the world and there's going to be crime regardless. Yeah, it's a, it's a total, it's a total, they're blowing it way out of proportion, huh? Oh, for sure. Would you say there is a problem at the border at all? So there is a problem at the border. Um, I really would wish for her to go visit the border while she's here. I don't know what's on her schedule and whatnot. But I mean, there's work to do, and and I can't, I can't dismiss that. You know, there's problems to, you know, to fix. But I, my personal wish would be for her to visit the border with the governor so they could see what's going on. And just so that we're all aware, quick, fast, easy, and in a hurry, I asked Chat GPT, which is you know, if you know, you know, uh, list all the accomplishments Kamala Harris has had since becoming vice president. And let's just see here. Since becoming vice president in January 2021, Kamala Harris has been involved in a variety of roles and accomplishments. Some notable achievements and activities include the COVID-19 response, 
Harris played a key role in the Biden administration's COVID-19 response, including efforts to increase vaccine distribution and address disparities in vaccine access. And we all know how great the vaccines were for everybody, right? Yeah, quite an accomplishment. Infrastructure and Investment and Jobs Act. She was involved in promoting and advancing the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which aimed to modernize U.S. infrastructure and create jobs. Was this the same act that was supposed to bring internet connectivity and access to millions of Americans for which she brought none? Okay, yeah, accomplishment, great. Um, climate change and environmental policy, okay. Harris has worked on initiatives related to climate change and environmental policy, supporting efforts to address climate change and promote clean energy, which is most notably tied to the automotive industry, which is currently tanking because there's no feasible way that these automotive manufacturers can actually keep up with the required mandates for battery powered EV vehicles on top of the cost to build and also the high price of borrowing money since inflation is through the roof and interest rates are up and people are just not, they're not buying these vehicles, let alone want to buy them, but better yet can't afford to buy them. Women's rights and gender equality. She's been a vocal advocate for women's rights and gender equality, including efforts to address issues such as reproductive rights and gender based violence. But that doesn't really seem like an accomplishment, it just says that she's an advocate. So what has she actually done? Voting rights. Well, Harris has championed voting rights and has been involved in efforts to support and protect voting access and election integrity, which couldn't be anything further from the truth, seeing as how under Kamala Harris's administration and policy and initiative and push, now it's legal for illegals to and not have to show ID to do it. Immigration policy, the hits just keep on coming. She has been active in discussions and policy efforts related to immigration reform, including addressing issues at the U.S.-Mexico border and advocating for a more humane immigration system, a border in which she's never visited, a border in which she has never been the czar of, and a border that she's now telling everyone she's going to eliminate detention centers as soon as she becomes president, which would then send millions more migrants flooding into this country. Be excited. Foreign policy and diplomacy. Harris has represented the U.S. on the global stage, engaging in diplomatic efforts and representing U.S. interests in various international forums, even though she's never been to the border and also has never been to Europe. Oh, and by the way, she considers North Korea to be one of America's strongest allies. Oh, and did I forget to mention that she supports Hamas? <sighs> Economic policy. These are supposed to be accomplishments here. She has supported economic policies aimed at addressing economic inequality, supporting small businesses, and promoting economic growth as she clearly understands how bad inflation is and how it makes things more difficult for people. Criminal justice reform. Harris has been involved in discussions and efforts related to criminal justice reform, including addressing systemic issues and promoting fair and just legal practices. These are discussions. She hasn't actually done anything. <laughs> Engagement with Congress. I'm not even going to read that one. In comparison. Hey, ChatGPT, could you list all the accomplishments Donald Trump has had during his term as president of the United States of America? Sure, why not? During his term as president of the United States in January 2017 to January 2021, Donald Trump achieved several notable accomplishments and implemented various policies. Here is a summary of some of the key accomplishments from his presidency, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, Signed into law in December of 2017, this legislation reduced corporate tax rates from 35% to 21% and provided temporary tax cuts for individuals and it aimed to stimulate economic growth and job creation, which it did. Judicial appointments, deregulation, criminal justice reform, USMCA, trade agreement. 
COVID-19 response, economic growth, foreign policy, military and defense, immigration policy, healthcare, energy policy. The, Donald Trump's reputation precedes him. By contrast, I'm announcing today that under my leadership, the United States will commit to the ambitious goal of slashing energy and electricity prices by half, at least half. We intend to slash prices by half within 12 months at a maximum 18 months. And if it doesn't work out, you'll say, oh, well, I voted for him. I still got him down a lot, but we're looking to do it. We're looking to cut him in half and we think we'll be able to do better. And every single thing that I promised, I produced every single thing. You will never have had energy so low as you will under a certain gentleman known as Donald J. Trump. Have you heard of him? So we think your energy bills will be down by 50 to 70 percent. How good would that be for a thing called inflation? How, how good will that be? And I believe and trust that he can do it. It just makes sense. MAGA, the party of common sense. But the attacks are not just limited to the media, folks. They're starting over in their playbook. The left-wing lunatics are trying very hard to bring back lockdowns and mandates with all of their sudden fear-mongering about the new variants that are coming. Gee whiz, you know what else is coming? An election. They want to restart the COVID hysteria so they can justify more lockdowns, more censorship, more illegal drop boxes, more mail-in ballots, and trillions of dollars in payoffs to their political allies heading into the 2024 election. Does that sound familiar? These are bad people. These are sick people we're dealing with. But to every tyrant who wants to take away our freedom, hear these words, we will not comply. So don't even think about it. We will not shut down our schools. We will not accept your lockdowns. We will not abide by your mask mandates. And we will not tolerate your mandates. They rigged the election and now they're trying to do the same thing all over again by rigging the most important in the history of our country, the 2024 even if it means trying to bring back but they will fail because we will not let it happen. When I'm back in the White House, I will use every available authority to cut federal funding to any school, college, airline, or public transportation system that imposes a mask mandate or a mandate. Thank you very much. And sorry for the censorship, but you remember what they did to us last time, right? Fool me once. Shame on me. Fool me twice. There's an old saying, you, you, you can't fool me. You can't fool me again. <laughs> but I can't speak the truth here without getting punished, without getting demonetized or the risk of being canceled. But unlike Biden and the media, like CNN, they can say and do anything they want and get away with it. Yes, yes, yes. I told you we're going to have a soft landing. We're going to have a soft landing. My policies are working. Start right in that way, okay? And Mr. President, anyway, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We got <laughs> Soft landing my ass. Okay, guys, last clip for you. J.D. Vance doing something Kamala could never. Taking questions and providing real answers to reporters and journalists before they twist and clip all of his words and jumble them up for their own hot takes just to get viral clicks on their headlines and to continue to trick and mislead and deceive voters for Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. Sir. New York Times, uh, I wanted to ask you about the latest economic news from this morning with inflation now being under 3%, uh, the lowest rate since uh, mid-2021. What is your sort of reaction to that news? In the words of Donald Trump, what a stupid question. What a stupid question. Well, I think you, the crowd reaction says it all. Look, when they say that inflation is down, they mean from a baseline where groceries are already 30% more expensive than they were when Donald Trump was president. 
And they're not saying it's coming down. They're just saying it's not going up as fast as it was three years ago. That is not a reputation or a record to brag on. That's a record to be ashamed of. Why did it take them so long to get inflation to where it is? And why are prices so high? It's because Kamala Harris failed to do her job. So if they want to go around, and this, this, this is, you know, it's funny. Kamala Harris, on the one hand, will say, on day one, we're going to tackle the affordability crisis. And like I said earlier, Kamala Harris has been the vice president for three and a half years. And I, I think, ladies and gentlemen, she's in effect been the acting president, because we all know Joe Biden isn't home. So she's been the one controlling government policy for three and a half years. She says she wants to tackle the affordability crisis on day one. And then on the other hand, she'll say, well, we've already got inflation under control. Well, which is it, Kamala? Which is it? The simple truth is America's credit card debt is going, getting higher. Americans are finding the basic necessities in middle class life less affordable. Americans are becoming, especially young people, are becoming paupers in their own country. If we don't do better, our young generation, they're not going to own anything. They're not going to have anything. They're going to be renters in the country that their parents and grandparents built. Inflation is a disaster. Kamala Harris does not have a leg to stand on. I like this guy more and more each and every time I hear J.D. Vance speak. I am just further, further excited about what he and Donald Trump are going to do together in the White House. Hey, folks, speak up, OK? Voice your opinions. Let it be heard. Let it be known. And vote with your wallets, OK? Because I'm going to tell you guys right now, if this campaign, if this election was based on the economic challenges and the economic future of everyone, then it would be a landslide victory for Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. Well, that is unless you're here illegally and you're relying on the government to fund your entire lifestyle and put you up in hotels and buy you food and give you cell phones in these sanctuary cities. But be that as it may, I want to know what you guys think. I can't wait to read all your comments. If you enjoy this video and videos like it from my channel, then let everybody know and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. God bless you. God bless America. Fight, fight, fight. MAGA 2024. Trump 47. Let's get it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.